I'm Ken Bozan, Chief Strategy Officer of Studio 3. I've been working here close to five years and I oversee all of our digital marketing strategies. My role as the Chief Strategy Officer is overseeing the implementation of digital marketing strategies through SEO, digital ads, email marketing, social media, both in organic content and advertising, as well as looking to new initiatives. The overall goal is to increase our clients' digital presence and bottom line, of course. The day in the life of the Chief Strategy Officer. Generally, this involves a lot of meetings, a lot of digging into clients' accounts. We like to focus on not only what's doing well, but where we have areas that we can improve, areas for growth, things that might not be currently envisioned or worked on in the day-to-day -day marketing efforts, and put those to the forefront so that we can actually affect an increase in their performance. First tip, actually leveraging the traffic that you are already acquiring. Most clients don't understand that 90% of the traffic or more that they are acquiring organically through hard-won efforts with SEO are actually being left unattended to simply because they do not offer any specific call to action for users that are not ready for a full commitment. I'll repeat that again. Users that are not ready for a full commitment. It would be akin to going out on a date and asking the person to marry you on your first date. Majority of people are going to say no. However, you can ask them to go to a movie. You can ask them to go to dinner. And when they're ready, you can ask them to marry you. Very similarly with your digital marketing efforts, you have users that are hitting your website every day interested in services you're offering and talking about on your website. But all you're asking them to do is to schedule a consultation, which is the final point of action. Realistically, you should have some transitional call to actions that ask a user to do something other than the full commitment of scheduling a consultation. Let's take a survey for those that are interested in hair restoration. Let's find out what type of hair restoration might be best based on their condition. With that, you can find out a lot of interesting data about them. This is called first party data. Now we get into actually understanding and owning that user's data that we've already won based on the value we've provided on our website. We acquired them, they were interested in it, they clicked on our link in Google. So clearly we did something right there. Now let's ask them some further information to identify them. We identify them in various ways. It can be by gender, it can be by interest, it can be by age. That data is crucial because now you know what this particular person is interested in. It's not anonymized data that we're paying for with Facebook. It's data that we're actually getting and in the best fashion because the user originated. That's your prime prospect that you will want to follow up with. You will want to engage with them, provide them additional content that moves them from awareness, interest, to point of consideration, decision, action. Tip number two, attribution. A lot of marketing efforts fail because they do not correctly attribute the leads that they are driving from their efforts. Do you know how many patients you acquired directly from that ad campaign you're running? Do you know how many patients you acquired from referral versus organic? Probably not. The lines get blurred, especially when you're talking about organic, referral, etc. because users will get referred, they'll go to Google, they'll do a search for your brand, and voila, they get tagged as organic, and their first attribution point would be a referral. But they did come through organic. You did have to have a website. You did have to show in Google properly, and you had to be clearly showing up for them to click on your site. So. Both are correct. That's where we get into a new modeling of attribution, where we actually grade attribution by many touch points. Google is actually coming around to this with their new Google Analytics platform, understanding that attribution needs to be in a data-driven manner where you not only have first touch point, last touch point, but you have every touch point in between. All of that is to say, Google doesn't have the answers. They're only really looking at the data that comes through Google. More importantly though, they cannot see what happens after the user leaves your website. And that's where attribution is ultimately crucial when determining ROI. It's very simple in e-commerce where the point of conversion, purchase, occurs on your website. However, when we're talking about lead generation, the sales process occurs after the user converts on the website. The conversion on the website is just the starting point of 
the sales process. The user is interested to schedule a consultation. Now they're off website. So now we have to do offline attribution of these patients that actually get acquired. We have developed a really awesome tool here at Studio 3 called Leadloop. This tool not only will tell you all your marketing sources as they are attributed, but they track that user then offline after the initial conversion of a scheduled consultation request comes through and tracks that user to the point of surgery booked, surgery scheduled, surgery completed. Now you have the ability to match up that marketing campaign, that email campaign that you sent out in June, now in September or October, you can actually see, wow, we had three patients actually schedule a surgery from that email campaign. Content is king. Yes, we produce articles that are rich in expertise, authority, and trustworthiness, but that's only one aspect. That's literally only targeting users on Google. What about users on social media? What about users on YouTube? Do you know that YouTube is the second largest search engine behind Google? Well, that requires a look into how users are searching on YouTube. A whole different search psychology than how they're searching on Google. While you're trying to get across ultimately the same core message, it may require the re-envisionment, leveraging of that content in a way that makes sense to the user searching on YouTube versus the user searching on Google. Similarly on Facebook, we understand that users on Facebook or Instagram, TikTok for that matter, are not necessarily doing a keyword search like you would on Google. They're more of a display platform. We're going to talk to those users nonetheless and still want to provide content that is engaging, that provides value, that gets them aware of our brand, generates some interest, maybe moves them to a point of consideration, and maybe they then jump to Google and do the search and they're a little bit lower on the funnel then. All these platforms work together, whether you're on YouTube, whether you're on social media, whether you're writing a blog article, or whether you're writing a landing page to convert users that are directly searching for a specific service. You have your overall content strategy and you are just leveraging your content for the right platform. You understand that audience on that platform and you figure out your message that communicates what that audience wants to hear. Not necessarily what you want to say to them, but what they want to hear. If you found this video helpful, like and subscribe for more helpful content.